So take for instance this, if I hold that, it's gonna give me no light whatsoever because I pressed the wrong button. So if you're with a group of runners, say you're rap, map, rap meeting. <laughs> Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Hope you are all training hard out there and getting yourselves prepared for a, a long, wet, cold winter of running. Now, I know that sounds a bit depressing, but those dark nights are upon us once again. And I actually think that winter running can be pretty exciting, especially if you can get yourself off those roads and hit the trails. Now, I know that running at night on the trails can be pretty intimidating and it does take some practice and we definitely have to do it as safe as possible. But I think it becomes a bit more of an adventure and it can be great fun. One of the most important pieces of winter running kit is a good quality running head torch. Whether you're gonna use that light running on lit pavements just to be seen by others or you're gonna be hitting the trails and moving at speed, a quality head torch is a vital piece of our winter kit. Now, as you can imagine, we get asked a lot of questions at the channel about running head torches, especially as we move into winter. I've spent thousands and thousands of miles running with one of these strapped to my head from lots of different types of brands, different models, super lightweight ones, really heavy ones, extremely bright ones and some not so bright. So I thought it was the perfect time of year to put together Run For Adventures Running Head Torch Buying Guide just to help you decide what head torch would work best for you when it comes to your running, but also to help guide you through the things to look out for when it comes to making that important purchase. So you don't end up buying four or five head torches before you get to the actual one that works for you, kind of like I did. So the first thing we're gonna do is break this review down into three sections and discuss all the things we feel are important when it comes to your running head torch. So number one is gonna be lumens or brightness of light. Number two is gonna be burn time or battery performance. And number three is gonna be functionality. I feel those three things are really important when it comes to you deciding what suits your needs best. So let's dive into the buying guide and let's talk all about lumens first. So what do these head torch companies mean when they go on all about lumens? Basically it's how much brightness you are getting from your bulb. So the more lumens, the brighter the light, the less lumens, the dimmer the light. Now the world of running head torches has become a pretty crowded and confusing place and there's running head torches from 60 to 70 lumens all the way up to 10,000 lumens if you'll believe the claims of some of the sellers on Amazon. So I think the question you need to ask yourself is how bright do you think you need your head torch? Now that's going to come down to where you're running, is it on the road, is it on the trail, how fast you're going to be moving and how technical are those trails that you're going to be running on. Uh, a good rule of thumb when it comes to lumens on a running head torch is I think 200 lumens is a basic requirement because anything under that isn't going to be that good when you're moving at running speed. So if you are running on lit pavements through town and you hit the odd occasional dark road then around that 200 lumens mark is probably going to work well for you. So something like the Neo 4 from LED Lenser or the NU25 from Nightcore, two really good entry level torches that are packed full of features, they're really good build quality, they come with great warranties, nice and lightweight, and they'll give you around that 200 lumen output, but they're also both made by well-established head torch brands. Now, if you're the type of runner that goes out for road runs and you hit the trails occasionally through winter, 200 lumens of light probably isn't gonna do the job, and you're gonna struggle to see, especially if you're moving at speed out on the trails. So I think somewhere around sort of three or 400 lumens. Now, it doesn't seem like a big step up from 200 to three or 400, but it really does does make a big difference. So even if those trails you're running on are super technical, three to 400 lumens are gonna give you that nice bright light. They're gonna light up those trails ahead of you, filling you with confidence, keeping you nice
nice and safe and hopefully trip free. So something like the HL18RT from Fenex, or we've got the UT32 from Nightcore and Petzl's Attic Core 450. Three head torches that are definitely going to give you ample light if you're hitting the roads or the trails. Uh, the Nightcore torch actually on max power is around a thousand lumens, so definitely bright enough to light up any trails ahead of you. Uh, again, all three head torches quality construction, great warranties, and they've all been developed and designed again by brands that have been working with head torch technology for years. I've done a full review on the Fenix torch and the Nightcore torch on the channel, so I've left links in the description if you want to check them out. Right, that's road runners and runners that occasionally hit the trails at winter, but if you are taking your trail running to the next level and you're going to be heading out for sort of long winter nighttime runs, running on a big mix of terrain, or you are diving into the world of ultra running and you're going to need to run through a summer or a winter's night then you'd probably want a bit more performance when it comes to your running head torch don't get me wrong three to four hundred lumens is probably bright enough for most runners on most underfoot conditions but what you tend to find in those brighter head torches say 500 lumens or above they'll come with different settings worked into that head torch so you'll have max output mid and low output so what you can actually do is drop that light down to the mid setting you're still going to get around 3 to 350 lumens but it is going to increase your battery life and burn time and it's still going to put out enough light for most running situations. Torches like Fenix's HM65RT or Petzl's Neo Plus are definitely going to give you that super bright output so that you're going to see where you're going even if you're moving very quickly in technical areas but they give you all that adjustability as well so you can drop them both down to a lower output and then they're going to give you that massively increased burn time on the battery. Uh, I've done an in-depth review on both torches on the channel. Definitely worth checking out full of details full of information so I've left a link in the description below talking of burn time and this is very similar to lumens it really depends when it comes to battery performance on what you're going to be using your head torch for the one thing I would say try and make sure the unit is fully rechargeable but it will also run on standard batteries obviously this is going to save you a lot of money in the long run it's better for the environment but it also gives you that flexibility if it will run off standard batteries when it comes to burn time. For example, the HL18RT from Fenex is a fully rechargeable unit, so it comes with this nice compact rechargeable battery inside, but it will also run on standard AAA batteries. So if you're going out for a long run in the winter and you're not sure whether that rechargeable unit is going to last the distance, you can grab three AAAs, stuff them in your race vest or in your running belt, and then you've got batteries to pop in if it does run out. So pretty much doubling your battery life. Uh, also, you can buy replaceable units, so you can buy a spare rechargeable unit, and then it gives you lots and lots of options when it comes to battery performance. This is a feature that I always look for in my running head torches. It's only when you start doing those longer nighttime runs that battery life can become an issue. You know, the last thing you wanna be doing when you're out on a nighttime run is having to keep stopping and replacing those batteries, especially if your head torch isn't rechargeable. When I go out for a long nighttime session, I just want to put my head torch on my head, hit the on button and go running and not worry about it for the duration of that run. So head torches like the HM65RT being a 1500 lumen head torch on max power offer you those options. So again, I can lower this to sort of mid setting, which is still a super bright 400 lumens and bright enough to light up any trails ahead of you. And I will get roughly around a 10 hour burn time. So pretty impressive from such a small unit. If you want to get even more techy, then you've got the Petzl Neo Plus, which um, again, 750 lumens on max power. Um, I've never run it on 750 lumens. I tend to operate on around 350 lumens with this head torch but it's also got reactive light technology worked in so this top part of the torch here isn't a light it is a sensor and it reacts to surrounding light so 
If you're running with other head torch runners, then that torch light will dim down. And if you run into a town with street lights, things like that, again, it will dip down in power, again, prolonging that battery life. So I've actually used this torch in the arc of attrition a few times. And with it set on max power at around 350 lumens, with that reactive light technology, I've actually pretty much gone through a winter's nighttime section on the arc, which is around 12 hours of running. So a pretty impressive burn time on the Neo Plus. Lastly, we're going to talk about functionality. And by this, I mean the features that you have on a head torch that are actually useful to you as a runner. So literally, the things that are good to have on your torch and the things that we can do without. So we've talked about lumens and we've gone into battery life. But I also think there's a few other things that are really important to think about when it comes to handing over your hard earned cash for that head torch purchase. First thing being is weight, you know. Remember, you're gonna have this unit on top of your head and you're gonna be running with it. So weight is super important. You could be having that head torch on for hours and hours and hours. So I would always try and keep the weight of your head torch down to a bare minimum. There's some crazy light head torches around at the moment that still offer you a great level of lighting performance. So we've got the HM65R2 that we mentioned earlier, 1500 lumens on max power. We've got 10 hours of burn time and 400 lumens. And it still only weighs in at only 140 grams. And that's including in the rechargeable battery as well. It is a slightly bigger unit than some, but brilliant size unit when you think of the performance of the torch. You've got its slightly lighter weight cousin, the HL18RT, uh, 500 lumens of output, still really good burn time on that battery. And it comes in at under 100 grams, at only 90 grams, and that's including that rechargeable battery. So you don't have to run with a great big lighthouse on your head to get a really good level of light performance from your head torch. Other things to consider with your head torch is, does it have a good waterproof and shock rate in. At the end of the day, we're going to be using these on dark winter nights, so we could come across some pretty challenging weather conditions, especially if you're trail running in the UK. And the other thing, like I mentioned earlier, is it rechargeable and will it run off standard batteries as well? This is a feature that I always look for in my running head torch. Another feature that you might not have thought about but can be really handy with our head torches is, has it got a red flashing light feature on it. So the Neo Plus has this red flashing light on the back of the battery pack. You can also have it on constant red light. Some of the entry level torches also offer a similar feature. So the Neo 4 from LED Lenser also has that red flashing light on the back. Great if you're out there hitting the roads at winter, it's gonna give you that extra level of safety. But also if you're ultra running or you're thinking about getting into ultra running, then a lot of races nowadays, especially if you're gonna be running for a nighttime section, part of the mandatory kit will be a rear facing flashing LED light. So it's great if you've already got it worked into your head torch. A locking mechanism on your head torch can be super handy as well. By that I mean the way to lock those buttons off on your torch so you don't turn it on by accident. So take for instance the Petzl Neo Plus, I can switch that round to the padlock there on the side. That torch will not turn on now. So if it's in my bag, it's not gonna come on by accident. Nothing more frustrating than running a race, getting to the nighttime section, reaching in your pack, pulling your head torch out, put it on your head, turning it on, and the battery is flat because it's turned on in your bag. Also, close proximity lighting can be a really good feature to have on your head torch. So by that, I mean with this little night core unit, if I press the right button, we get a little red light come up. Great if you are with a group of runners reading maps or say you're coming into a checkpoint but you still need some light to see where you're going but you don't want to blind the crew with your bright head torch, this red LED feature will offer you that. You've also got some great little safety features worked into some of the head torches nowadays. So a lot of them will have a strobe feature. So if you get into any tricky situations, whether it be out on the trails or up a mountain, you can flick it onto that strobe mode. So it's gonna give you that bright strobing light to attract attention. And some even have what they call an SOS mode. So flick it into SOS mode and the head torch will actually flash out SOS in Morse code. Hopefully you'll never need to use either of those features, but it's always handy to have it just in case. And lastly, how easy is it to navigate through the torch's settings or to find the buttons? Because at the end of the day, 
You see what I've done there? You're gonna be running with that head torch on your head and it's gonna be dark. So the easier it is to find those buttons, to flick through the settings, the better. The last thing you wanna be doing is faffing around, trying to find things or trying to adjust that head torch and take your focus off of those technical trails because that is just an accident waiting to happen. I want everything on my torch to be really easy. So changing settings, finding the buttons, changing the batteries, adjusting the strap. There's no reason for your head torch to be over complicated. So as you can see, there's quite a few things to take into consideration when it comes to that all important head torch purchase. I really hope this video has helped and it will stop you making those mistakes where you buy several units until you get to the one that suits your needs the best, kind of like what I did. Just before we go, the last thing I mention is if you go onto a website like say Amazon, obviously other websites are available and type in that search engine, bright running head torches, all kinds of wonderful things will come up from brands and manufacturers you've never heard of, advertising head torches that are 10,000, 20,000 lumens with three weeks of battery life from a kryptonite power pack. It's all a load of nonsense. Uh, lumens is quite a hard thing to measure anyway to get it consistent, but I'm pretty sure their head torches aren't 10 or 20,000 lumens. You'll struggle to get two hours out of the battery, and that is if it doesn't blow up on your forehead first. So, I'd always buy a head torch from a really well-known brand, a brand that's put money and development into their headlamps like Fenex, LED Lenser, Nightcore, Petzl, Alpkit, Silver, really well-known head torch running brands. What I've done in the description below, I left a load of links down there for some entry-level head torches, some mid-level and some all singing, all dancing head torches that we would recommend if you want to find out any more information. So that is a wrap on our running head torch buying guide. Really hope you enjoyed the video guys, really hope you found it helpful. This is the first time we've done a buying guide video on the channel, so if you think it's a good idea and you'd like to see more content like this, get in the comments below and let us know all about it. Don't forget, you can follow us on our other social media platforms, whether it be Instagram, Facebook, or Strava. And we've got that Run For Adventure giveaway running all month where you can walk away with some super cool Run For Adventure swag. I've left all the details of how to enter in the description below. So get in the mix, guys. It's well worth winning. But for now, thanks for watching. It's really appreciated. We will see you back here very soon. And as always, stay safe and keep on running.